Hello, and welcome to a completely unofficial release video for MindTest 5.0. In this video, I'll be highlighting some of the big changes to the engine and MindTest game. First and most important, this release is incompatible with previous versions of MindTest. Most mods will probably continue to work without any issue, but you will not be able to connect to any servers which have not been updated. You should either not upgrade immediately if you play on servers, or install both versions until the server updates. Your old world should transfer over with no problems. In like fashion, if you host a server, upgrading to 5.0 will prevent anybody with older clients from connecting. The first thing we're going to look at is the brand new online content database, which we can access by clicking the content tab and then clicking on browse online content. And this pulls up a currently 76 page, but this number will fluctuate as mods are added and removed. Um, well, first we have all packages, which will give 77 pages. Currently there's one game. Again, this will change, and it might already be different when you watch this because it was recorded before you watched it, obviously. 76 pages of mods and texture packs. So basically all you got to do is, um, oh, we actually have one I can update here. So I'll just go ahead and update it. Download it and installing. Please wait. Boom. Done. So maybe we want... Uh, we want a texture pack that uses grayscale or uh, mini 8x and 8 times texture pack. So instead of 16 pixels or a 128 hand painted style, there's only two pages currently. Um, reduce saturation for this. Um, but yeah, any of these you want? You want one? Just install it, just like that, um, and, and then you can use it. And same goes for the games and mods. Now we have searching available. So say we want to look for something that adds mobs. Um, we can see there are a few pages worth of mods that add mobs. And these download uh, the images and titles and descriptions. We can also search for authors. So for example, if you want to find my mods. Uh, currently, I only have one on the content database. In order for mods to show up, or games, or texture packs, or anything like that, they do have to be added to the content database, which I will have linked in the video description. Um, so you can just go there and add your mods or texture packs. And then to enable them, obviously, it's the same as always for enabling the mods. To do texture packs now, you just... Uh, Click on your texture pack in your installed packages list and click on the use texture pack button. And that is how you enable texture packs. And that is the new online content manager, which makes it very easy to download and install mods. And oh, one thing I forgot to mention, um, it will let you know if there are updates as well. So if I go through here, the awards mod has an update. Um, and you just click the update button and it downloads and installs. In the future, I believe it is planned for there to be some sort of a filter system so you can just see mods that have updates and update them without having to go through every page to see if there are updates available for your mods. So that is a pretty neat feature. Um, for all of you modders out there, add your mods to the content database because People aren't going to be able to install your mods using this method if it's not on that site. Now, you can still install mods the old-fashioned way by manually putting them in the mod folder. Absolutely no reason that that will stop working. But for people who maybe aren't quite as tech-savvy or don't want to spend as much work doing it, this is a great method for them to use, and uh, you should definitely make sure your mods are there. Let's move on. We have a brand new map gen called Carpathian. This map gen features vast plains with average elevations between 5 and 10 nodes above sea level. Rolling hills, small hills, ridged mountains, or what we might consider mountain ranges. Stepped or terraced mountains, fjords, though these are rare. Sometimes multiple mountains meet and join into one massive landmass, reaching extreme heights. There are two new map gen features I want to mention, vertical blend and the new stratum ore type. Vertical blend can be used when defining biomes and will create a blending effect between two biomes. The blend mixes with the above biome only and does a lot to break up abrupt changes from biomes. The stratum ore type creates a single ore stratum 
that is continuous across map chunk borders and spans the world. It can use noise to define upper and lower bounds, or be used without to create a flat ribbon of OR. Keep in mind that in this case, OR doesn't actually have to be an OR. It's just the map gen definition. It can be any node. A small but very nice addition is that clouds now increase the amount of fog and decrease visibilities for players that are standing inside of them. This makes mountain climbing more immersive and adds an extra bit of thrill as visibility is decreased. Another small but fun new option is the pitch move mode. This defaults to off and can be changed by going to settings, all settings, and changing pitch move mode from disabled to enabled, or toggled with the L key. With this enabled, free move will be done relative to player orientation. Pressing the forward key will move you in the direction you are looking. Left and right will move you left and right relative to your orientation. And like fashion, jump and sneak will move you up and down relative to your orientation. It does take a bit of time to get used to, but you can get some really sweet flybys and shots of the landscape or builds. This can also be used when in water as well, even with free move turned off. It's now possible to use your mouse wheel to pick items from a stack and place them. Scroll down to pick items up from a stack and scroll up to place items. Additionally, if you hold down the sneak key, it sends items the same way as if you sneak clicked. This is going to save your, your click buttons on your mouse. So much wear and tear. Of course, it'll put the wear and tear onto the mouse wheel, but I mean, that's, that's a pretty good trade-off, I think. A small but welcome change, especially for anybody that's ever accidentally deleted a world before. Now there is a confirmation screen where the secondary delete button is moved. So accidental double clicks will no longer result in worlds being permanently deleted. Global textures allow for a single node to have different textures depending on where they are placed. There are a few options that control placement behavior but I won't get into that here. I just want to show off the feature with this rather silly example. Currently, this feature is not used in my test game. A much better example than the previous is this image. On the left, you can see a brick wall that is using the global texture. If you look closely, you'll notice a few bricks are slightly different colors and some have corners missing. On the right, you have the normal brick texture. The difference is subtle, but does a lot to break up the repetition. Modders, check out the API for information on how to use this. The plant-like draw type got a handful of new features. Rotations in 2 degrees increments is now possible by using a param type 2 of dag rotate. If rotation isn't being used, you can use the param type 2 of mesh options to get five different shapes, an X, a plus sign, a six-pointed star, a pound sign shape, and a pound sign where the four faces lean outward. These shapes can be mixed with modifiers that do one of the following. Make the plant's placement slightly random horizontally, make the plant 1.4 times larger, or slightly vary the height of the placement. These changes allow for a wide range of different looking plants, and can do a lot to add variety to the plants of my test. Param type 2 can be changed per node, which allows for greater variation with only need to create a single node. Mind test game also got its share of improvements and additions. For starters, we have three butterflies now, white, purple, and red. And you can catch these with a butterfly net and then place them back in the world. And a butterfly net can easily be crafted with, I guess it's technically a bug net, can be crafted with string and a stick. And you can also catch fireflies with it. Now the fireflies only show up at night, but once you catch one, you can craft it as such and get a firefly in a bottle, which creates a nice little um, light source that you can put in your caves or wherever's dark. We also got one new food type. We have some delicious blueberries here, and these grow on uh, blueberry bushes, oddly enough. And they'll, they'll just reappear after some time. Uh, we also have these fence rails. So these work very similar to your normal fence posts, except there is no upright. So this will attach wherever I put this to. It does the corners. Admittedly, this looks a little goofy because there's uh, 
there's no post holding up these far ends. But when you want to do something like this and have a long run without having a post at uh, every single node, it's a nice addition. Oh, and that uh, you get 16 of those with this craft. Um, also, we now have binoculars, which can be used with the zoom key. Um, and if I didn't have creative turned on, if I did not have the binoculars in my inventory and I didn't have the, I forget what privilege that's bound to, I would not be able to use the zoom key. But I can't really demo that because I have that stuff turned on. New stair types. Uh, they don't automatically place but we have the inside corner, outside corner, you know, the normal stair and a slab. And these can all be crafted using the same recipes. So using this shape with all of your different materials, of course, you'll get the inner stair and an outer stair. It's done like this. You get six of them. And then the stairs and slabs stayed exactly the same. No difference there. We did have a kind of major change with cotton plants. So now a cotton plant drops seeds and this, this cotton material, which if I had a couple more, let me just pick a few more of these cottons. You can now turn this into string. So that changed. Um, it's not a huge change, it's just an extra step, but it makes it a little more realistic because you don't actually get string off of cotton plants. You get like cotton swabs, pretty much. Um, this cactus, I don't remember if this was available before, just as something that spawned in deserts, but you couldn't plant them yourself. My friends, that has all changed with a measly five pieces of cactus you can grow or you can create a cactus sapling. And offhand, I don't actually know how many saplings. You get one sapling for that. Okay. I just wasn't sure if I had forgotten to put the correct quantity in there or not. And uh, this takes a long while to grow. Um, it was actually calculated out. So you can't grow cactus chunks, blocks, whatever you want to call them, faster using this method than just growing them like this, because we all know they will grow like this and they'll just grow straight. So there was some math done to find out how many of these you would get how quickly and that was all taken into consideration when doing this. Moving right along, we have a few new dirt materials here. We have permafrost with stone, permafrost, and permafrost with moss. You'll find these in the new cold biomes and another new thing this ice is uh something i placed in for a demo that's coming in two seconds we got some ferns i forget what this is called kind of ferrous litter or something um, basically in the new um evergreen forests there's this kind of material on the ground i think the needle texture changed as well but i'm not going to cover all of the texture changes this my friends it's going to be like impossible to really demonstrate what's happening here, but ice is now slippery. There is a group that you can use called slippery. And when you are on it, you slide. It's kind of cool, not going to lie. Plenty of fun things can be done. Um, currently, it's only added to the ice. But that's really the only thing in my test game that should be slippery. And then a feature that I know a lot of people have been waiting for, and I have set up in the water here someplace, there is another new draw type called Plant Like Rooted. And what this allows is for you to put plants or pretty much anything that uses this shape underwater and they don't get those goofy air bubbles around them so you can see we have some uh, kelp or seaweed um, I don't actually know if there's a real difference between those two or if they're just different names depending on locations in the world and we have some coral 
Now these corals will only place on top of this uh, coral skeleton. So if I try placing it on sand, it won't work. This is actually done with a hack. Um, in order to make this work, what was done was the uh, the plant portion of this. So the green coral, the blue coral, or this purple coral. Um, they're actually not their own nodes. They're actually belonging to the node below it. So to the engine, it's just rendering water, and then these are being placed inside of it. So it's pretty easy to use. You just define what the bottom node is and then the tile to use on top of it. And then there is, because as you can see when we dig it, the bottom node's digging, but it's actually only giving us the top part. Um, and the same thing will happen with these. We dig it and we just get the core or the uh, the kelp part of that and the sand stays down there. Um, and that is, I forget what the callback is, but there's just some relatively simple little portion about how that works. And then of course, there's this new beach grass, which I forget what the name is. And even if I knew what the name was, I don't know how to pronounce it. Marum or something grass. And you'll see this all over the place on the beaches. It's everywhere. Um, but it actually looks pretty nice. And I believe that's it. There were a lot of other little tweaks. Oh, you know, we can actually go take a quick look at one of these permafrost biomes because there's one right over this hill here. There were a lot of tweaks and little changes and stuff that I can't be bothered to dig through and find and mention. But here is uh, some permafrost stone and moss in a uh, in a permafrost biome. We got some snow on top of some of them here. Yeah. So that is that. There were probably a lot of changes to textures. I know the uh, dirt texture changed. There's now uh, some much lighter tones in it that almost look like they could be little pebbles or something in the dirt. Um, so that changed. The grass texture may have changed. Leaf textures changed. I think the texture for sand may have changed. A lot of texture changes. There are more changes that I didn't cover. New API features, bug fixes, etc. So you should check out the change log for full details. Visit mindtest.net forward slash downloads to get your hands on the new version. Special thanks to Ben Rob and Lone Wolf for some suggested edits in the script. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel for more mindtest content and share this video with all your friends to spread the word about the new release.